Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time checking us out, hopefully you have a look around. This is like episode 70 something. So it is a weekly podcast. We've done it for 70 plus weeks straight. So you got lots of content to catch up on. Hopefully it doesn't suck and you want to go back and listen to more. Uh, this is available via iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, TuneIn, all the pop places you can uh, listen to podcasts. And it's also available on YouTube. Now, YouTube's where the conversation is. So if you uh, listen, you want to say anything, head on over there, write comments down in the episode. Just search WCR Nation with the episode number and we can talk there. If you are one of the cool kids, one of the elites, somebody who watches or listens to every episode, gives a thumbs up on YouTube, comments, and most importantly, you order your supplies through me, uh, what's up? And thank you, thank you, thank you. It is because of you that I get to have real name brand Pop-Tarts in the morning. So thank you very much. Uh, If you want to buy your supplies from me, uh, my number is 862 312-2026. You can call, text, whatever. Text is always best. Just shoot me a text. I love when people uh, will text me and they'll be like, hey, everything is in my cart. I'm ready to pull the trigger. I get credit for it. It doesn't cost you any extra. And you jump into elite status. So thank you guys for everybody who does that. A couple quick shout outs. I want to say what's up to Ryan, the window cleaner, Uh, Bobby Walker, and his son, Caleb. What's going on, guys? Uh, if you haven't checked out Bobby Walker's stuff, uh, his uh, podcast is epic. I try to plug it as much as possible. Listen, watch, follow him. And then uh, Pete's Window Washing, what's going on? Thanks, guys, for all your comments, interaction, and just being awesome. But today, we are going to be talking about, I guess, like offers, like emotional selling. But we have one of the most uh, elite guests that we've ever had here. You guys know him. You've seen him. What's going on, Derek? Hey, Josh. How's it going today? Um, I'm super excited to be here with you, and uh, I'm glad that we did this. I think we've been talking about this for like maybe a Ever. year. Or Ever. You know what it was? Was you're, you're, You were very, very busy in Latimer stuff with uh, his podcast, the Quick Talk podcast, um, and it was like you've just always been a very busy person, FYI. I don't know if you know that. So it's been very hard. So it's cool that we finally connected. And uh, I mean, every time we uh, see each other in person too, we just talk forever. But I yeah, actually yeah. said a, a funny story to you uh, about you when we were talking about um, the uh, uh, conventions and you were one of those people where I was like, oh, it's a, something was different. Like, I don't know, you like, you just looked different. You were talking to Chris and something had passed. I'm like, oh, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. You're like, yeah, we've met like four times. And this was like three years ago or something, four years ago now. Actually, even longer than that. But anyway, it was a long, long time ago. And I was like, ah. Uh, so I still remember that, like, crisp in my brain. So what's up? Yeah. Man? Yeah. We, well, you know. I love you, Josh, regardless. <laughs> we made so many people. And then, like, it was in passing. Like, I, I, had, I, because of that interaction with you, I've changed how I introduce. Like, every time I meet somebody, I'm like, ah, oh, man, good to see you. That's how I say it. Now I don't say nice to meet you because I can <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, those types of things is kind of related a little bit surprisingly yeah. to what we're talking about like uh because it's about getting into the noggins of your customers and how you actually um uh portray uh your your platform that you're going yeah. to be selling from and so that's why i'm really excited to get into that a little bit later on um you know, you uh, you had another show before this one that was the Mullen Jersey show and Um, I remember back when I had my cleaning company and I had actually gone through a very, very rough time. I was kind of like up here and um, some things happen and I'm like just at my lowest um, several years back and I had a bucket, a squeegee and, uh, you know, the T-bar. Yeah. And I'm like, I bought that stuff to hang out with a friend so that way I wasn't not working when I just was hanging out with them. Like yeah. that's why I bought that stuff. And it was all that <laughs> good stuff I bought online. Uh, probably from window cleaning resource possibly. <laughs> but I bought the stuff and it was just sitting there in the corner. And um, I decided that I wanted to, uh, I've always just had the entrepreneurial like desires. Like I always wanted to do things to provide my own way. Um, my, this comes from, uh, you know, from my, my family, 
like history. My dad works three jobs, has his own company um, that he also runs and um, has done this to be able to provide me with the opportunity to decide for myself what I want to do with my life. My grandmother had lost her husband early on and she had three kids to support. And so she, um, this is back in the horse and cart days and she would um, split, hang on, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no uh, Apple doesn't understand what not, do not disturb means. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> so like I said, you're busy again. That might happen. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she loaded up uh, uh, timber and uh, the, the forest. She like split these trees. She loads them up on the back of the cart and it was a two day trip, which now takes for me to drive. It's a 15 minute drive. <laughs> it's like a two day trip to haul with a horse, mules, whatever she used in to like exchange goods for currency, you know, to provide for her family. And so my mother went on to get uh, just shy of a few hours of a, uh, her PhD, but she's a teacher. She, she gives back to second graders to, you know, to like help uh, them in that transition going into the next system, the next school and their middle school. And um, so I've always respected their efforts and trying to give back, you know, um, it's just this giving spirit. And so um, I'm like, okay, this is this, I'm at this low. I don't really care if I have a big business, but I do have to pay the bills. Yes. The facts are the facts. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to figure out a trade that I want to do and make a business out of it. And I had several businesses. I've had everything from snow cone businesses I've had uh, e-drop and sell at one point where people drop off their stuff and I'd list it online. Everything made money, but it didn't make sense. It didn't bring me joy and happiness, you know? And so I tried doing interior car repair and uh, this was, I was with my cousin. He does, he had the business and I, I didn't really like what he was doing specifically, but I noticed that I'm driving all over the state with my cousin. And I'm like, I've got this bucket and the squeegee. I'm going to go door to door. And I'm going to try to get a client, you know, like I'm going to try to get these clients and I'll just travel with him. And then everywhere he goes, I'll just get out and go do my work and come back. Yeah. And so um, I started doing those things and uh, I came across my large storefront job that we like when you first go, you're going out and you like, maybe you get the small mom and pop store that has the gift, you know, like come by your gifts or your antiquities and you got that window cleaning job. Maybe it's 25, $30, right? Yeah. But then you see the big franchise window <laughs> cleaning job and you're like, I want that one, right? Like that's the thing that's the biggest in my mind right now. And so I'm going to go get that. But whenever I went in there, of course it's um, the facility manager handles this or the corporate handles yeah. that, that you're, you've got this initial objection. And this was something that happened when I was a car salesman for a couple of years. Um, I have some really incredible stories as me as a car salesman, why I even was in that field uh, in the first place. But one of the things that would happen is, is I would approach somebody and you get an objection. You get, yeah. Hey, I'm just looking, right? That's the first thing they say on the car lot. Yeah. Just like when you go into the storefront, it's corporate handles that, or that's out of my control, or you'll have to talk to such and such. Like you're getting objections, bam, 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 because so what I would do on the car salesman thing, I wrote on the back of my business card, I wrote J E S S L U C K I N. And so I'd go up and they'd say, I'm just looking. I'm like, Holy cow. You think maybe we're related? I'm just looking too. <laughs> and then I just roll right into my, like I broke that defensive barrier because I got them laughing. Now they're yeah. on my side. Now I can tell them stories as to why they need to know, like, and trust me. And I can sell this high ticket item. And so I've noticed these throughout these paths of every business I've ran is, is that there's emotional connection to the sales process. There's something in the cognitive bias of when, it, you know, like when you're trying to sell something that makes people either fight or flight or freeze or question, am I going to be on board with this? Uh, is this going to be hard for me to implement? Is this going to be, is this going to hurt me? Um, New things pop up in the brains of your customers, these red flags, and it's like the croc brain. And it's like, pew, 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 all these flags. The brains are like, why, uh, what should, do I need to do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So when you first start selling, you like, you're fighting and you've got the right and left brain. And the, the, the right brain is this emotional side. And most of the time the left brain is like logical with your decisions. 
And to make this happen, to get into the right brain to where you can emotionally sell something, you have to break that. And then um, we're going to kind of categorize this into three sections like uh, marketing that you got marketing part. You've got to be able to get them to actually raise their hand and say, I'm aware of your product. And I'm actually kind of interested. You have to be able to sell your offer and then you have to close it because cash is for closers. If you're not closing, if you didn't do one of those three things, you probably didn't make it's money. Sale. Yeah. You're just talking to somebody. Yeah. Exactly. And this is the highest leverage of your learning. If you were to learn and focus on, you know, closing, how to close, become a better closer, become a better salesperson or become a better marketer. That's the highest leverage use activities of your development as an entrepreneur and your learning like paths. And the, um, the point is, is that you're changing beliefs for the purpose of a sell in this process. And whenever I'm in the selling part, I'm just going through my stack and, and push positioning the opportunity that they have. So that marketing part is when I'm changing beliefs for the purpose of the sale. Number two, selling, I'm just going through my stack or opportunity and closing is where I'm actually using a close and, and commanding them to take action for some sort of reason. But I get this feeling like, why, why am I still broke even though I'm learning so much, right? Like yeah. you know, throughout this process, why am I still broke with this business I thought was a good idea originally, even though I'm learning so much about these areas. Um, and it's because there's, there's a piece missing and it's the storytelling. The, the part we're gonna get into is cognitive dissonance. And that process that happens whenever the right brain shuts back off, the emotional part comes down, your left brain comes back and it starts being logical. And if your product or service does not allow the customer to identify and reason with their decisions, you get callbacks, you get like no's after you've already got the yes. You get like, maybe you sold them on the phone and you didn't collect any money because you're a bad closer. And then they call you back and say, ah, it didn't work out, I'm not gonna do it, yeah. right? Because you didn't hook them with a story and an offer. And so that's what cognitive dissonance is. And um, the, a good example would be the grocery. We all go to the grocery store and maybe you go in there for eggs. <laughs> we go in there for eggs or milk. Yeah. But what, what do you walk out with? You got Everything. DVDs from the red box that you didn't <laughs> intend on getting. You've right. got a t-shirt. You've got, you know, all these other things, even though that wasn't on your list. Well, it was marketing that got you in there in the first place. And I bought the, you know, and then whenever you come out, you've got all the stuff and um, you're just like, that right brain kind of goes away. And then the logical part is like, why did I, why do I have all this stuff? <laughs> what is this stuff? Why do I have this shirt? I bought this shirt because it defines me because you start reasoning with your decisions and you start implanting that into your decision-making process and you identify yeah. with that. And so that is the big part of cognitive dissonance because you want to be able to pick, pick things up and be able to make sense of your decision making. And we're going to talk about four chemicals that uh, is a big part of this entire like process because, and you'll see why we got, I, I use the acronym dose to remember the chemicals, but it's dopamine. Uh, you got dopamine, you got oxytocin, you got serotonin and endorphins. When you're going through a buying process or your customers are going through your buying process, these are the four chemicals that's being released in out of their brain. They're like trying to do things. And let's go through them for a little bit with dopamine. Uh, these, this is one of the easiest ones to get and it's the most addictive. Your customers want like a distraction from the pain that they're, their current pain, right? So they want a distraction from that pain that's why you bought the movies. That's why you like you needed a distraction from whatever you're working on and you get this hit of dopamine whenever you take action on on your thing. Your body, your mind is like naturally wanting to get these things. And then you've got um, endorphins. I'm bringing that one up next because that's another easier one to get. It's when it, but you do have to put a little bit of work in to get the endorphin hit. Uh, you have to be able to check the box. You you go do the workout and you feel good after because you got an endorphin hit, right? So whenever you um, 
command people to check the box, so to speak. Like for instance, guys, if you get uh, guys are getting a lot out of this, uh, you know, press that like button, hit, give me some hearts, show me in the chat that you guys are getting a lot of value from this. When you check the box, you're getting a mini endorphin hit. Yeah. So when you command attention for them to take action and check off that box, even if it's on the, after you've closed the cell, you're like telling them the next steps that they need to do. They check the box. They're one step closer to getting to the goal that they originally signed up for. Yeah. And that's what endorphins does for your brain. Serotonin is also easy to sell when you give them a status increase. Um, this is common with, um, you know, uh, whenever you see it all the time, take people take pictures with their, you know, with their famous person. They're like, <laughs> look at me, right? Look at me. What, where are you? Right? Like, um, or we give ourselves, um, uh, this hit whenever we, uh, identify people in our audience. Like you call your people, the nation, what's up nation people are, when they can identify with what you're saying, they're like, I am part of the nation. Yeah. yeah. I am a funnel hacker. I am creating every day. I am like a service maverick, like my service genius lab. I like to refer to them as my service, you know, my geniuses, right? Yeah. What's up geniuses? If they identify with that, like they get a status hit and they get that serotonin hit, and then that is hooking them to, um, into the next, into my stories, right? And then the um, oxytocin is the hardest. That's when I left it last. It's the hardest one to get because the reason uh, is, is because this is through connection. So when you're in the process of cells, you're very rarely getting oxytocin unless you're using stories to connect with your customer. Um, and for that reason, I tell my audience to create an origin story. I tell them to create stories that support their, um, their the false beliefs that their customers have in their offerings. Yeah. Uh, we identify with false beliefs. We create old stories and new stories to throw rocks at the old stories. Like you create stories to create connection and to um, give people that hit of oxytocin. So these four. Go ahead. I was going to say you can't fall in love with a business, but you can fall in love with a person. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and, and like I say, it is the hardest one to get because if you're not a good storyteller, if you're not, you know, like there's, if you don't know specifically what you're going to throw rocks at, you're just going to be it's telling hard. stories and they're not going to connect. So this one is a little bit harder to do. And that's what we study in the, in the lab is uh, we talk about offer creation and creating the funnels with the right copy, which you talked to Michael Geller about copy. He's a brilliant mind. And the copy is super important, but knowing specifically what kind of points you're going to bring and how you're going to stack your offer and give them something new rather than just an improvement on an already existing offer, set yourself apart and allows your bidding process against another service provider to be apples versus oranges. It's not apples versus apples anymore. Yeah. In my mastermind last night, I've got a few students and we went through this and I showed them. Uh, kind of like some stacks I'd use in my cleaning company back in the day and they uh, It became clear to them that if they were to bid against me I'm gonna win and I'm probably gonna get even if I was cheaper on one part of my thing There's another package. They're probably gonna buy and it's gonna blow your offer away, right? right. and so those are the four chemicals and how, you know, this is applicable in your marketing, right? So you're telling the story, you're getting in, endorphins, like, you know, like I said, like, come over to the chat, tell me what you guys think about this. And, you know, in sales, I'm presenting my offer and, I'm, and then I'm telling them why I, each one of my things is super important to them as a homeowner or uh, in my case lately, it's, it's why that's important for their business or as an entrepreneur trying to grow. And, um, I'm under, you need to understand the levers that causes action. And that is the point of kind of like the emotional sales process. And, um, and when this right brain hijacks the left, what are you going to do to like capitalize on that? And this is something that definitely could be used for evil. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you want to be ethical with these things and well, there's a difference between um suggestions and man manipulation you know when you when good people good car dealers you know that's when you go in and all of a sudden you come out of the car like ah oh, 
how did that happen? Like, then you look at it later, it all happened, but you're, you're, you were manipulated to a point. And that's how sales work. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's exactly. a, it's a weird word. Um, so, and, and that is what the theory of cognitive dissonance says is that once the emotional part of the right brain shuts down and the logical part, uh, picks that up, uh, what the, the reasons that we, uh, we look for the reasons that we apply our decisions to our identity, our identity at that point. I bought the shirt because it identifies me. It, yeah. you know, anyway, you know something is pretty... gold dropped. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the pretty interesting part about things. And I always tell people kind of in their businesses, like you can't be wrong in business, but the only way people are happy with a decision is because they think it's their decision or they made the decision. Like, Nobody wants to be pushed into something, right? That's high pressure. That's, they, they don't like that because their brain is telling them, I was forced into this decision. But if you tell somebody like, oh man, is it, it is a nice day. I'm just, oh, you know, like I, I, I love nothing better on a day like this than some nice chocolate ice cream. You know, it's good. you go on and on and on and all of a sudden they go, we should get some ice cream. You go, oh yeah, we should get some. It was their idea. They want ice cream now. Just because you put it in their brain and opened it up, they were the ones that chose it. They're extremely happy of their decision to get ice cream, you know, like, right. Or it's like back that. in the truck. That's got the, the ice chest and all the, the tailgating stuff and all the memorabilia from your favorite sports team. And it's all stacked on the back of that truck at the car lot. And they're driving by and they're like, Oh, I love that ice chest. And I love that tailgate stuff and that tent. And it's attached to that truck. I should buy that truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's things like that for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that people, always kind of, they don't, they don't miss, but they don't put so much specific. We talked about copy before and we've talked about sales and we've talked about the process, but the thing that people kind of lose focus on, which I think should be 75 plus percent of the focus is the mind of the buyer. Like why did they buy? Not because, oh, they needed windows. No one needs windows. Like what was it that triggered them to think that that was the good idea? Like why, like you said, why did you buy that shirt out of any of the other shirts? Why didn't you buy the red one? Why didn't you like, there's so much subliminal stuff going in there. And there's a lot of studies and books and things like that, that are on the subliminal side of, of buying in the mind of like why somebody was happy and the triggers kind of, but people lose focus. They go, Oh, we're just window cleaners. You know, I, I sell something. Hey, it's, it's, it's $10. Do you want it for $10? And they buy it cause it's cheap. Like they forget that the mind is the real reason that anybody buys. it. Right. And the biggest one of those is the serotonin, the status, because let's face it, people that pay for window cleaning, they probably don't actually have to have that done. They could do themselves. <laughs> yeah. It's a luxury um, service. And it's an increase in status. But here's the thing is you have to fight the false beliefs. You have three major like false beliefs. You have the vehicle, the biggest thing that's going to carry the opportunity that you're going to offer. You have an internal uh, false belief, which is the internal reason why I can't do this. I can't do this because my family will think I waste my money on stupid things. Yeah. Uh, you have the external belief, which is the thing that is out of your control that's going to prevent you from getting what you want or to getting the thing that you need or to be interested in the opportunity that you're going to see. And so whenever uh, with my students, whenever I'm working through the process to identify um, these, these three core areas, you know, this is one of the big things is like, you need to be able to like fight the thing that they're going to have to fight with when they're buying something because of a status increase and a serotonin chemical in their mind uh, has gone off. They're increased status. They feel good about themselves. What about when mom asks, why did you waste your money on that? Mom, it's okay because I've got a 10, I've got a seven day rainy day guarantee. I also got a, they have 3 million in insurance. They have a America's 1 million street free guarantee. They have like, yeah. you have to give your customer the opportunity to fight that false belief that their family and circle is going to have about the thing that they did as well. Yeah. And when you are so convinced on something, like you're saying, they absolutely understand that was the right decision. It's like, what would you, if, if I saw a, a two-year-old walking into a busy street and he's about to get hit with a car, I would do everything in my power to push that kid out of the way, to move him, to do whatever. I would jump over people, right? Because you absolutely are 100% sure in your heart that that's the right decision. You know, it's the same thing in sales. When you can convince somebody, not even convince, but show them, why their decision that they made is the best decision they could possibly make, then 
they they got it they they know no one no one ever thinks anything that somebody does cannot be wrong because they made the decision otherwise they wouldn't have made the decision so having somebody just convinced that now they're on your side they're they're the ones selling your service out there that's why referrals work so stinking well absolutely and uh before we wrap this up i just wanted to um tell a little bit about why i'm even doing this or even working with people to try to like why emotional selling is so important is because like a lot of my clients you maybe not have even heard of them until we applied these principles until we like started doing things and they are able to create movements and they're able to fix their businesses or they're able to like have that objective be a reality. And I didn't realize that it was such a big strength of mine until like I've, I'm running this service business and I took it serious at one point and I did blow, blow it up. Right. Like, so I got this, you know, mid sized six figure company. It's going really well. I've got day, guys working nights. I got guys working days. I've got a few crews. I've got huge franchises all over the state of Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, um, Oklahoma, and we're doing all these different things. And I, I'm sort of proud of it, right? Like I like it, but it's still like there's a piece of me that's dead inside still. <laughs> like yeah, missing. Because I'm like, I'm not helping enough people, right? I'm only serving one person at a time. So I got into. Um, online marketing and into helping influencers reach their full potential and helping um, people build out um, like my background is in computer programming. I've got a degree, you know, a degree in computer programming. Um, I've got a lot of experience in all the things, marketing, sales, and closing, which are the three main areas through my experience through different, um, different stories that have had happen to me in the lot and, and throughout my life. And so, um, I, um, uh, I use the, these principles to actually create, um, network for networking. I've studied a lot of network marketing. I've studied a lot of, a lot of things with marketing, but yeah. it gives me the ability to, um, break those walls and become close to the people I want to work with and serve. Um, because I'm a giver, just like my family always has been. I'm a giver. I give to the audiences through the channel of the person that I'm working with generally. Yeah. So the things that I've created with Josh is providing tons of value. Even if I'm not involved with him, you know, in the future, even if he's not had me on his podcast, let's make that clear. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> Josh. Uh, but the point is, is that I, I find this guy, he's got cool software, um, but it's rough. I wanted to vet it. And so I use just his software and, um, in my cleaning company for nearly a whole year just to like validate that this is actually returning, you know, returning some sort of like, it's going to be good if I were to recommend this to somebody else. Right. Right. But also when you go to an event, I noticed that, Oh, well startups, the owner of the company is at the event. Like that's not a big company if the CEO is there. Right. 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 And so, um, you know, just so I go to, I'm starting to go to events because I'm taking my business serious. I run into him and uh, we begin talking. I'm, cons you know, I'm, I'm subscribing to anything that he does. Um, this is before he'd launched anything, but if I could, like I bought his book, I, I'm doing things because I want to create this connection and have the chemicals in his brain say that this is a, a good relationship. There's nothing harmful with this, that we can work together and we can build something great. And that worked. And so he approached me about an idea that he would want to help businesses with automating their business, growing their businesses and preparing a sellable business. And so I um, was super excited and we started this venture, you know, and we started like to build it. And this is like, I think it was eight months before our very first launch of the boot camp that we had put together. And about halfway through three quarters of the way through, we'd given early access to a gentleman that um, was a good friend in the community and he needed to um, have a lot of help because he was going to go bankrupt. And so we gave him early access to this and um, some time went on and we're, we're launching, we're in the process of launching, but shortly after we kind of hear from him and he had six figures booked for the next season. And um, it's not like some tremendous story, but what happened was is that Josh and I decided we've only met each other in person one time. So let's go meet with this guy and um, meet his family, meet him, look at his business, hang out, and uh, we'll meet each other 
and we're going to have a steak dinner because I said, we set some goals for our initial launch and he said that he, he, he owed me a steak dinner if we met those goals. So like we all, we drive to Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee and um, we, uh, we get our steak dinner and, but I'm meeting with a family and it, it really was a huge pivotal moment for me because I realized that I'm in, I'm doing what I love now and I, I'm, I have joy and happiness with what I'm doing because I helped him with his children. I help him provide jobs to build a business, to have relief when he sleeps. Not, it wasn't just the course. It wasn't just Josh or just me. It was the fact that he believed in himself and we broke those false beliefs and he was now able to like move forward. Yeah. And that was through the journey of the eight month journey of like trying to develop the perfect sales message and the perfect, like developing out the platform, the fulfillment process is building all the funnels, building like even learning a lot. Right. And so I'm driving back and I'm like, this is what I want to do. I don't want to spend another minute with any kind of headaches with my service business. I don't want to try to talk to clientele to try to get them up to get another graffiti cleaning job or a window cleaning job or vent hood kitchen restaurant cleaning. This, that is not me. Yeah. So I got, I get back and I gave my company away to the guy that was the project manager of my service company. I said, I came in, I was like, Hey, you've been doing a fantastic job. You're a great leader. You have crews that you're working with this business is completely yours, pay the bills and I will help get you the right bookkeepers. I'll help you like any questions you have, I'll give you one hour of mentoring per week and then you're, you're just going to run the business and it's yeah. completely yours. Best um, day of his life, by the way. Best day of his <laughs> life. He gets all the company trucks. He gets like, there's, you know, like that's huge. I never got that opportunity. I've always had to grind and, and build out whatever it is I'm going to do. But the reason I did was because I wanted to be a hundred percent focused on the thing that gave me joy and happiness and allowed me to create the freedom that I looked for. Right. Yeah. And the interesting thing about freedom is, is that sometimes we have this vision of freedom and we get there. Like I'm happy with my service company. It's doing really well. And to me, it's freedom because at, in the beginning, because I'm able to buy whatever I want or go wherever, like I'm still able to do that stuff, even though I gave my company away then. Yeah. So that the idea of freedom and what I thought it was, wasn't actually that. So sometimes we have to let the system crumble in order to rebuild and redefine this new vision of freedom that gives us the ability to be joyful and happy. Yeah. So yeah. In closing, yeah. that was some thoughts. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that is the service genius lab. If you are um, on Facebook, which if you're not, I don't know what you're doing, but go on Facebook, just search service genius lab. Um, and that's, it's, you could just join as a group, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a paid for group and um, uh, you can just request to join. There is a couple of conditions. I do ask for email and uh, the fact that uh, like no promo stuff, um, but it's a really great community. Um, I'm just dumping everything that I, all my knowledge into that. Uh, you know, so I think a lot of people have like, we just started, um, earlier this, I think it was earlier this, uh, last month. And, um, it's already like, just like the growth fault was whenever I started that one. So, um, uh, it's, it's a great community. Um, but if, if you're interested in how to like, set the right pressure on your, uh, your pressure machine or what's the right squeegee blade. That's not the right group. It's more about like the, this type of teaching you've just heard today. It's more about like how, you know, like real Business. systems, wicked syst systems, growth implementation. I bridge the gap, the gap between strategy and execution and show you how to like take a strategy or an ideal or this idea of freedom or just a simple strategy like a marketing campaign and how do you execute on that without being overwhelmed? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome group. I mean, from what we've talked about, it's just, it, it's, it is what WCR nation is too. And I'm not ever going to tell you how to squeegee or something, but I'm going to tell you, you know, my thoughts on the business side of things. And this can be actually put into anything. It's just service 
you know, in general, can be any of the types of, of business. It doesn't have to be window cleaning. It could be pressure washing or roof cleaning or anything that you mentioned before, too. So check it out. Go to uh, the, the Service Genius Lab on Facebook. It's pretty awesome. But uh, well, Thanks, Josh. Cool, and also for you, uh, I got something for you. I do have a product, a physical product, that's going to be great for the WCRE store whenever yeah. you guys are ready. We should talk about that. See, see, it's a win-win. I like that. I like that. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you like taking some time and I know you're very, very busy. So I really do appreciate this. And, and listen, if you guys are checking this out, this guy is a very, very smart person that suck up anything and everything that you can with him. Um, join the Facebook group, make that part happen. And uh, it's pretty awesome. You do a lot of speaking too. So you're one of the ones that I really like for classes and things like that. So yeah, I think Thad's going to have me at the huge convention. You guys can nice. get tickets now, I think, at the, uh, mm -hmm. the huge convention com. I believe I'll be at the ICE convention uh, with a um, – I run I'm, – I'm partners with several uh, different people that maybe you guys know, uh, like Kurt, um, Kurt and Josh and, like, a bunch of others. So I'll be involved with a service software summit at both of these events and then also talking at the event itself. I'm, I'm fairly certain is what I've been told. Cool. Uh, well, good. Actually, I have no control over any, some of that stuff. I'm just, uh, <laughs> just my integrator. You. My integrator <laughs> tells me what I need to do. Right, right. Hey, uh, guess where you're going to be on Tuesday? You're going to be in uh, <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. So well, cool. thank you, Josh, for having me on, and uh, thank you, WCR Nation, and uh, thanks for all that you do. And because you're here, I know that you're serious about your business and you want to grow. And uh, if you need any help at all definitely uh, PM me or uh, uh, talk to me in the group service genius lab. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll carry on that conversation. Sometimes the best right. ones happen after the camera stops rolling. That's right. See, that's how it happens. <laughs> well, thanks. Like I said, um, thank you for uh, watching or listening. If you do want to buy your supplies from me, uh, you know, my number it's 862-312-2026. And this week's code for the 5% discount. If you order from me, is Smallwood because I forgot his name in the first place. You you now can get a discount because of it. Just tell me that code and uh, we'll get you five percent off of your order when you order from me. So, but cool. Thanks for everything. Um, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for going back, liking, commenting, all those cliche social media things. And until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs> <laughs>